Welcome back to another episode of Leading Las Vegas. I'm Danielle Ford of DanielleFord.com, where visibility makes a difference. And today I am interviewing an amazing woman, a friend, someone I truly admire. And she has such a unique business, you guys. And she is just making a change in so many women's lives through her her website and her group, The Badass Goddesses. So this is Carol Ann Weber. Carolyn, thank you so much for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me. I'm kind of excited. I was a little nervous, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I've watched you just speak from the heart so many times, so I know that as soon as I ask you some questions, because I got some questions about what's going on over here, and I want you to um, to explain to our viewers what it takes to be a badass goddess. Okay, well, first of all, what's going on over here? I brought one of my favorite goddesses, and again, this is just a statue representing her. <laughs> we don't worship the statue, but this is Tara. Okay. And Tara is the goddess of enlightenment, and I figured the best one to be by my side today is to remain enlightened so I can at least sound like I'm reasonably intelligent. Oh my God. But my favorite <laughs> story about Tara, real quick, is that she, the story goes that she had decided she wanted to evolve to become a Buddha. Not only was she a goddess, but she decided, I'm going to go for enlightenment and become a Buddha. And she was told she could not become a Buddha until she uh, reincarnated into a male body. Okay. She said, no, thank you. I'm perfectly happy with my female body and I'm going to the top that way. And she actually did. She is now one of the most highly esteemed Buddhas of the whole pantheon of Buddhas is Tara. So I like that. You know, I think that. that's very important, especially nowadays and everything that's happening with our society. Like, mm -hmm. no, thank you. I like to stay myself and, and I raise would, to the top. And I would say that that's being a badass goddess. You're at the next question is, you know, what does it take to be a badass goddess? And I think it really, first of all, is being authentic. Like, where is your true self? You've got to connect with that and stand up for it. Hold strong with it stand in the middle of it, speak from that place. And it's not always easy because we're so conditioned to make nice or to agree with other people. And I find myself doing it. You know, I'll be sitting in a conversation and be going, hmm, when I really feel, hmm. Right. You know, so being a badass really starts with being authentic and being real and then sticking to your guns about it. And it doesn't mean you have to be ab abrasive or combative or anything else, but just sit in that and come from that. And I also brought this, which is an Egyptian onk. And in fact, my girlfriend brought it to me from Egypt. That's awesome. And this is one of the, the most important symbols you see in all of the Egyptian hieroglyphics. And it is, it is the symbol of life and the source of life. And what you'll notice, it looks very similar to the symbol of the female, like mm -hmm. you have the male with the arrow mm -hmm. and the female with the zero. And so it's interesting that femininity and divine feminine is associated with life. Life, obviously. So, <laughs> you know, that's the other thing. Being badass means being, fill your life, be, be alive, you know, ju fill, juice yourself up, juice what you're doing up. I've learned so much about the whole goddess thing from you. I didn't know anything before because we've been friends for a, a while now and I, I've learned a lot from you. But one of the kind of like maybe stereotypes or associations I had about goddess was like it was just kind of floofy and like, I'm a goddess. But I love how you pair it with badass because it's extremely clear that like you're not just sitting here being pretty and like just being a, a statue. You're like doing cool shit in the world. You know, and I love that everything you post about in the group and everything is so inspiring. And I, I just want to say thank you for putting yourself out there and inspiring everyone else to, to do the same. Well, what's interesting about what you just said about everyone has a concept. If you're a goddess, you're foo foo. <laughs> well, if you study the tradition of the goddess, and I think you know that I am a, also a scholar, I got my degree in world religions, and after I graduated from college, I didn't stop studying, because I went around the world on this uh, world campus afloat, which was part of my college education, mm -hmm. where we traveled the world and studied on board. So every chance I had, I stopped at one of the major religious sites in whatever country we uh, happened to dock in. And when I got back, I said, 
what is missing in that picture? And I sort of like reran all of the holy places I stopped in the earth, on the world, in the world, and they were all men. You know, all of the, the symbols of the divine and even the pictures of the leaders, the religious leaders were all male. And I said, where are the women? Right. You know, like, are we not spiritual? Are we not also have a, the symbolism of being divine and having a divine spirit like the men? And so that kind of got me started on it. And when you go back and you study the goddess tradition, which predates the, the major world religions we have today, they go back 10, maybe 15,000 years ago, those goddesses didn't mess around. I mean, like you have, you think of Kali. I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of Kali, the Hindu goddess. Uh, she is pictured with her tongue sticking out. She's holding up a skull of a demon, and she's got a waist belt of skulls around her of all the other demons that she's slayed. So she doesn't mess around, you know. She really takes on evil and, and takes it on you know, and then there's there's so many different goddesses, goddesses of war, goddesses. How about the goddess of the storm, the uh, Ethiopian Orisha? Her name is Oye, and she's the goddess of the storm. Nobody messes with her. Or the goddess Pele, she's the goddess of the volcano. Try messing with Pele. <laughs> so you know, these are not frou frou. Right. And, and that's what's fun about it. And then there's the beautiful one. There's Kuan Yin, who is the goddess of compassion. She yeah. who hears the cries of the world. So you go to her. I mean, I just get chills thinking about her. She who hears the cries of the world. You know, she takes you all in with love and healing. So there's such a wonderful panorama, a wonderful spectrum of goddesses. But believe me, they're not all frou-frou. <laughs> I think badass is now like an understatement. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> like that's really it's really interesting and I know that you um you you talk about the goddesses through your website and yes. you offer the free goddess postcards on your website. Yes, I do at badassgoddesses.com. Yeah. And if you sign up, you get free postcards from the goddess every week and you will love some of the things the goddesses have to say. <laughs> of course, I translate it through a modern day view of what That's these awesome. goddesses have to say. And I think my favorite, I'll give you an example. Uh, the goddess of the harvest, the Greek goddess of the harvest, I have her post postcard saying, uh, take comfort in knowing that when the shit hits the fan, it will fertilize your tomatoes. I love that. <laughs> that's really good. So that's just yeah. one of the goddess postcards you can look forward to when you sign up. Thank you so much. I have one more question and sure. I don't want to get like too crazy into it. I know we've talked about it, but I come from a, a Christian background. Yes. And I know a lot of people are super, you know, in, into whatever religion. I personally believe, like, in every religion myself, like, everyone has a right to, you know, practice religion. I think we're kind of all praying to the same person. That's kind of my own thing. Um, but what would you say when people, like, I know that my, my Christian conservative background would say that the goddess stuff is, like, evil. Yes. What would you say to that? I've been asked that question so many times. And the, the first thing that comes to my mind is that, divine feminine, no matter how much it was attempted to be eradicated from modern religion, remains mm -hmm. wherever we look. And in Christianity, there is not only Mary, the mother of God, but Mary Magdalene, who was the first woman that Jesus appeared to after his resurrection. And it was no, Jesus did nothing by accident. You know, and he honored Mary Magdalene by being the very first person he appeared to. And I think my take on that is that you have to have the other half of spirituality and that's what we women bring to spirituality and you look at all the modern day churches who are the real machinery and the, and the, the engine that run the churches it's always the women behind the scenes mm -hmm. that are the engine that keeps the church going they're the ones who create the events and so whether you want to embrace fully the idea that there's a divine feminine it's always in us and it's working through us even in modern day religions i definitely see that yeah thank you so much for sharing that you guys um obviously you can tell that carolyn is just a flipping well of information 
so smart and so empowering. I would love you guys to check her out more at her website, badassgoddesses.com. And if you guys have any more questions or whatever, just reach out to her. They can contact You can contact her that way as well. Um, or leave a comment, and I will make sure that she gets it. So thank you so, so much for coming on the show and sharing your divine goddess badass wisdom with us. <laughs> and believe it. me, you're, you're one of my favorite badass goddesses. Awesome. I'll take it. I love <laughs> you it. go out there and you don't mess around, you get it done. And that's what badass goddesses are. So thank you for having me. Thank you for holding a space for women like me to do that and keeping us um, accountable. Yes, absolutely. And thank you guys for joining us. If you're watching this far, then I know that you are a purposeful, uh, driven leader. And I just want to say thank you for continually watching the show. I will see you in another episode. Bye, guys. If you loved this episode of Leading Las Vegas, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. You can also watch more episodes like this here or on leadinglasvegas.com.